What's up everyone? All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about trying to find stocks to trade. One of the biggest challenges with being a day trader is finding something to trade. There are thousands and thousands of stocks and you can go on Reddit, you can go on forums, you could go in chat rooms, you could find stocks a million different ways. And I have found a way that for me works really well. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut through all the kind of baloney. You guys know who I am. I don't need to tell you about me. I don't need to tell you about why I'm credible. If you wanna see my broker statements, you can actually see them on my website, warriortrading.com. I'm just gonna tell you about this strategy, which is day trading gappers. So one of the challenges, of course, with learning how to trade is finding stocks to trade. One of the other challenges is finding credible information that's useful, helpful, and helps you grow as a trader. So what I wanna show you here is a perfect example of trading gappers. So this is the topic for today. It's an excerpt straight from the Warrior Pro courses. Obviously I teach classes over at Warrior Trading. We'd love to have you guys join us. If you wanna learn more, come over to warriortrading.com slash strategy. There's a special page there that's specifically for you guys checking out this episode here on trading gappers. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, but before I do, I'll remind you as always that Trading is risky, in case you didn't already know that, and my results are not typical, so you should not assume that you will achieve the same or similar results as me, and you should not try to blindly follow me or anyone else. You've got to learn the strategy. And, and ultimately, that's the biggest challenge with getting started trading. Finding a strategy, a system of where am I gonna find stocks to trade, and then when, once I find them, where am I gonna get in, where am I gonna get out, et cetera. And that's what I teach in the Warrior Pro class. So um, this right here is um, chapter um, chapter seven, Gap and Go Trading. Now, Gap and Go Trading is a fairly long chapter. It has several parts. Let's see, I can jump forward to it. Uh, let's see, what chapter is this? This is chapter eight. By the way, this slide deck is over a thousand slides, so it's, um, it's pretty packed. But uh, so here's chapter seven, Gap and Go. So this is, we're gonna be kind of getting into some of the basics here. Now, I'm gonna talk about the process of reviewing the gap scanners, but before I get in that far, let's just step back for a second and let's look at this chart. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Let's get oriented. What we're looking at is a stock that right now, at this very moment, is up 225%. I'm up $77,999.99 on it, which is a terrific green day. Okay, it's got 111 million shares of volume. You can see that right there. So those are the number of shares that have traded hands. And it's a NASDAQ stock. It's listed on NASDAQ. It's not listed on the American Exchange or um, NICE or on the OTC Exchange. All right, well, is there any inclination that this stock was going to make this huge move from 12 all the way up to a high of $28.83? We'll mark out the high right there. Well, you know, why don't we clear all of our lines and kind of just get back to basics. Keep this really simple. I'm not gonna, in this video, break down the nuances of drawing trend lines and things like that. We cover all of that extensively in the classes. I also have other videos on YouTube here and there where I hint and sort of talk about the process of drawing these lines. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into that right now, but what you can see is a fairly clean and fairly simple chart I have volume bars, I have some moving averages, I have the volume weight average price. This morning, INDP was gapping up 67%. What does it mean for a stock to gap up? Does anyone know? It means that it's gonna open today higher than it closed yesterday. So yesterday the stock closed at about $7 and this morning it opened at $11.85 representing an impressive 67% gap on the daily chart. So the, the word gap comes from the fact that this chart, which is a daily chart, has this big gap right here. All right, so, so right, right, that's, that's the gap. Maybe it's, uh, oh, it's actually from about 7.05. In any case, so that's our gap on the daily chart. So this stock was gapping up. Uh, yesterday it traded on approximately uh, 170,000 shares of volume. And today is trading on 1,310 times relative volume with total volume of now 112 million shares. How does the stock go from 170,000 shares one day to 112 the next day? News. So this stock did have breaking news this morning, uh, which of course is what typically creates a gap. 
So the stock had news, you can see it out at 7 a.m. right here. And I'm not a fundamental trader. I'm not really dissecting the quality of the catalyst. There are times where we'll see a headline that sounds really great. You know, a stock has like FDA approval for, um, you know, a nasal spray for treating migraines. And then the stock drops 25%. And you're like, how is this possible? This seems like great news. So I try not to overanalyze the news and I just recognize that there is news. And if the stock is moving up, then clearly the market is responding positively to the news. So I guess the news is good. That means I'm a technical trader. I focus on the technicals more than the fundamentals. So this is the chart right here. The stock started squeezing up at 7 a.m. as soon as the news came out and it actually squeezed from 750 up to 10 briefly. It pulled back and then it rallied up to 1050 it pulled back and then it rallied up to a high of 1287. And there were uh, certainly some traders who were trading it early in the morning who maybe sat down on the early side and uh, saw that this was an opportunity. How would they have seen it? How would they have known the stock was moving? Right here. This right here is actually software that I developed for my students and I use it myself. We all use it. And this software scans the entire stock market for stocks that are gapping up. So right here, we have it sorted by the leading gapper. So every student who's in our Warrior Pro classes and the part of the curriculum and, and part of the community, when you log in each morning, you can log into the chat room, you can see me trading, and you can also see this uh, gap scanner. So this is our small cap top gappers. And you can see there were a number of gappers today. I look at something at minimum up 5%. If it's up at least 5%, that's to me uh, statistically significant. But we also look for stocks down more than 5% because sometimes those present opportunities uh, either to short it or for a gap down reversal. But I'm going to focus primarily here on uh, the leading gapper. So each day when I sit down, I'm usually looking at the top five leading gappers. The leading gapper is the one that's up the most. And sometimes it's a stock that's like, you know, 60, 70 cents. It's too cheap. I don't really want to trade it. I don't really get into trading penny stocks. Sometimes it's a stock that's too expensive. It's $100 a share. Now that's not as common because for a $100 share stock to be gapping up 60, 70%, I mean, that's a huge gap at a high price. For us, like a $2 stock opening at $4, that's already a 100% gap. So it happens a lot faster on lower price names. And so what I do to begin with is I review the scan. So if we pull this back up here, the process of reviewing the gap scanner. All right, so, um, and these are some examples. These are some case studies of, uh, of gappers that I traded. This was, um, this was one, $40,000 on Pixie. Uh, so Pixie on this day was the leading gapper. It was gapping up 78%, had a 300,000 share float, which I'll explain in a second, 1.8 million shares of volume and a catalyst related to COVID. So that was one of the ones I traded, $40,000 on Pixie. Um, another case study here, MDGS on the morning scans, leading gapper, took some trades on that, $7,000. APOP, second leading gapper. So on this particular day, the leading gapper had a float of 1.1 billion shares, ACB. That's a very, very large float. So let's talk about that for a second. The process of reviewing the gap scanner Initially, I look at the percentage gap. If our biggest gap around the day is only like five or 8%, then we don't really have anything that's super big. So that's kind of disappointing. Usually I like to see something at least 20%, if not higher. Um, why, just as a quick um, tangent, it's significant for me to even be approaching trading in this fashion. Um, I'm gonna pull up some metrics here. Um, again, this isn't to like brag or anything like that. I, I'm, I'm simply doing this to show you um, why what I'm saying is credible. So this is about $9.5 million in gross profit. And we're going to look at um, instrument down here. And let's see. So uh, performance by instrument movement is um, the majority on stocks that are over 10% and performance by the instruments opening gap. So of 9 million, 9.5, 8.8 million is on a stock gapping up over 2%. So I make the majority of my profits trading stocks that are gapping up. That's why it's important if you're thinking about learning how to trade momentum that you understand how to use a gap scanner.
and how to trade gappers. So the process of reviewing the scan begins uh, initially just with looking at how big the gaps are. And in this case, we've got a couple of big gaps. INDP was the leader. Now, I might already be familiar with that stock. I can click on it and uh, bring up some, um, some more detailed info on it over at warriortrading.com. You could also search right here and bring up info on it if you wanted to. So we know we have news this morning, 7 a.m. Um, and that's, I suppose, you could see the news. Uh, if we go back over here, the float is 1.6 million shares. Now, this is uh, important. So if you haven't already watched any of my videos on float, I have videos where I do a, a full definition of float and all the ways that float can change and everything else. But just in very brief summary here, just to save you the time, uh, float refers to the number of shares available to trade. So when a company does an initial public offering, they sell shares onto the open market. And then from that point forward, that becomes the float. So if a company sells 2 million shares at $5 a share, they'll raise $10 million in their IPO, right? And from that point forward, there's 2 million shares available to trade. So if you wanted to buy, I guess the whole company, you would buy 2 million shares. Now, um, there's, that's not always exactly true because sometimes companies will have uh, larger blocks of shares that are a different class. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to buy the whole company by buying those 2 million, but that's getting more detailed than is important. What's important for right now is understanding that the float represents the level of supply. So this is coming into a very simple supply demand equation. If you have a, a stock that is in very hot demand as IDNP, uh, INDP was today, then the low supply creates an imbalance and that's when you get a really big move in, in stock price. Obviously on GameStop, there was a huge imbalance between supply and demand. The float on GameStop um, is a bit higher. Hey girl, pull it together girl. Uh, showing right now at 46 uh, million shares, but still relatively low compared to a company perhaps like uh, Bank of America, which has 7.5 billion shares. 7.5 billion shares. Remember, 1 billion is a thousand millions. So a company like INDP is one seven thousandth as big in terms of its float as Bank of America. It's a tiny, itty bitty company. And this itty bitty company, how is it possible that it could go up so much? I mean, you wouldn't think that maybe it could because it's such a small company. And it again comes back to supply and demand. The shares of the stock are trading higher today on news. There are not uh, a whole lot of sellers on this stock and there are buyers and people are buying it and they're excited about it. And this is the definition of momentum trading. So the w trading gappers, I've, I call it the gap and go strategy. Gap up, go up. Now these stocks can be volatile in both directions. A gap up is not a guarantee that they'll go higher. Uh, MOSY is an example of one today that uh, did gap up and then sold off at the open. So what's different about these two? Uh, MOSY was the fourth leading gap. Well, both were worth keeping on watch. And MOSY was worth, uh, in fact, even trading right through this area here as it was breaking new highs, as it made new highs. At the open, it wasn't worth trading here until it broke over 680. So one of the setups that I like to trade is the break of the pre-market high. So through the gap and go, the full, the full chapter in our classes, I talk about um, taking the first and second pullback. And we have a bunch of examples of that. We also have live trading archives. Then I've got um, taking the break of the pre-market highs. So this is the one that I'm looking at right now, break of the pre-market high. So in this case, we didn't get a break of the pre-market high on MOSY. Over on uh, INDP, um, we did get a break of the pre-market high. We got a pretty uh, phenomenal break of the pre-market high. It was really spectacular right here. Okay, so that, that was the critical level that needed to break on MOSY that didn't. And I, I think the fact that we had something else that was so strong, uh, this became the one that was really in focus. And, you know, there's only so many traders out there and they can only focus on so many stocks at the same time. So ultimately, Whichever one is the best one becomes the one that people focus on and people are trading. And so today that was INDP. All right, so 
We start by looking at the gap scan. We then uh, check the stock to see that there is news. Uh, sometimes we'll have a stock on the gap scan and there's no news. And that's a little confusing because we don't fully understand why it's gapping up so much. However, simply the fact that it's up becomes a bit of its own catalyst, especially if it is one of the top five or 10 leading gappers in the entire market. So no news isn't necessarily a deal breaker. I checked the volume today, uh, but not with a lot of focus on that. More than anything, I look at the chart and I look at the float. If I see the float is 125 million shares or 89 million or 100, these are in white, which is a way of me kind of disregarding them. Not, not really usually gonna be very interested in those stocks. Under 50 million is better. Under 25 is better. Under 10 is better. Under five is better. The lower the float, the more parabolic we see. Now, it's not always true because GameStop was probably one of the most parabolic over a multi-day period, but what's more common is that lower float stocks, when they have a good catalyst, have a sharp imbalance in supply and demand that results in a really big move. So focusing on leading gapper, and today this one had a 1.61 uh, million share float. Very low float. There are some more metrics here that we can look at, but we're gonna focus primarily on the percentage gap, the price of the stock, and the float. I do typically trade uh, lower price stocks a little bit better than higher price stocks. When we start to get into the price range um, of, gosh, like over $50, that's when um, things can start to get a little sloppy for me. Uh, I probably have some metrics here. Yeah, so here we have some metrics um, of profitability based on price. So, you know, we start to get a little higher price and, well, GameStop kind of changed the metrics on that for me because I did really well on it. But in any case, I do better between five and, well, I guess you'd say between two and 20 would kind of be my sweet spot. So generally, anytime a stock is on the gap scanner and it's between two and 20, I'm gonna be pretty interested in it. And so in the case of INDP on the gap scanner, moving up, the chart looks good which means it's above the volume weight average price. It's generally consolidating sideways. And the logical breakout spot here, based on setup number two, break of the pre-market highs. Again, I have a number of different setups that I trade. This one also actually gave us a red to green move right here. It dipped down and then broke out. And we could also even call it an opening range breakout. It was over 1250. And it ripped up to 1348 and got halted on a circuit breaker. If you don't know what that is, again, that's something we talk about extensively in the classes. You could check out some of my other videos on YouTube if you want to look for it there. Anyways, it, ga it gaps, squeezes up, halts, opens higher, dips down, rips up to 15. And so we have a couple of nice trades here. One is right here for the break of 1250, which was to anticipate the break through the pre-market high of 1286. Alternatively, an entry at 1286 would have been fine, but a little extended on the one minute chart. It goes up to 1348, which is an opportunity either to take profit or to hold for a bigger move. It goes up then to 1418, dips down, first one minute candle to make a new high right here, the first pullback, breakout up to 15. And that's back to setup number one. Even if you just took those two trades, you do not want to overstay your welcome. Being a trader is not about taking 100 trades a day. It's about managing your risk. And if you could take a couple of trades, one or two really good trades each day, by focusing on high quality, you're going to have a higher percentage of success. If you focus on just, you know, kind of hitting, trying to trade everything that's moving, your accuracy is going to drop. And it's really not a good way to approach trading because every trade you take carries risk. So the biggest way that I mitigate risk is by finding a strong stock to trade and it starts right here with Gap Scanner. Then I try to find the best entries. And then I try to remind myself not to overstay my welcome. To trade it as aggressively as I can, but to know when to walk away. Today I was up $103,000 and I gave back uh, about 15,000 off the top and that was my cue to walk away. I gave back profit off the top. Uh, I gave back 10,000 on this red candle right here right there. And then I actually added back right here. I made back the 10,000 I lost. And then I lost 10,000 again right here. And at that point I said, you know what? I haven't made any money since right here. Maybe it's time to just throw in the towel and stop trading. 
Now we did end up having more opportunities later in the day on this, later in the morning, but not without some false breakouts and some choppiness. So, you know, I'm sure there's people that traded it all day long that made more than me. I'm sure there's people who traded it all day long that made less than me. It's not a competition to see how much you can make or how much you could lose. If you can get green and you can shut it down, you're actually gonna be doing something that the majority of traders haven't figured out how to do consistently. And it starts by knowing how to find strong stocks to trade. And for me, the gap scanner is the go-to place. I, again, just to emphasize, I know you guys have, you know, there's a million, play, a million people out there talking about trading and trying to teach you things about trading. One of the biggest challenges that I found when I was getting started is how to find credible information. I want to learn. Just cut through all the nonsense, all the baloney. Just get straight to credible, valuable information that's got some, you know, proof that it actually works. Because a lot of people, they talk a big game, but then there's no proof. You guys can see the broker statements on my website. You can see that my profits are real. And those are based on trading, gapping stocks, uh, just like this, the majority of the time. And if you want to keep learning, if you want to learn my whole strategy, I am happy to teach it to you. That's what I do over at Warrior Trading, and you can check it out. Um, come over to warriortrain.com slash strategy. Again, this is just an excerpt from um, chapter seven of the Warrior Pro classes. It's a, it's a short one, a short excerpt, because this is just by itself a fairly long chapter. But I hope that it's been helpful. I hope that uh, it gets you guys pointed in the right direction. And at the very le least, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So when I post uh, more helpful videos like this, you'll be able to watch them as soon as they get posted. All right, so thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you want to learn more, come over to warriortrading.com slash strategy. And uh, we'd love to have you join the classes and become a student because one of the things that's really hard is trying to piece it all together just by watching miscellaneous videos. Trading is hard. It really is. Don't underestimate that. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys for the next episode. And that right there was an entire video with no ads. I don't monetize my YouTube channel with video ads, which means you guys get to enjoy the content. But do me a favor, please, Hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that this channel is the channel to watch if you want to learn about day trading.